Imagine that you're a road construction worker and you're just trying to do your job. An off-duty police officer basically has a road rage incident. He comes into your construction zone. He appears to be drunk and he physically attacks you. You call the cops. What happens when the cops get there? Do they protect their colleague? Do they protect you? This is a crazy story out of St. Louis County, Missouri. This is an outrage. They cannot be allowed to get away with what appears to be happening there. So these road workers are now facing felony assault and kidnapping charges after they claim they were the ones attacked by this off-duty police officer. And now those charges, that case, is for some reason sealed by the local courts. And the authorities will not even disclose the name of this driver who had no reason to stop in their construction zone, get out of his car and assault them while possibly drunk was an off-duty police officer, and his name is being protected. Meanwhile, these construction workers who were attacked by him, they go to talk to the news media, and just like hours before the interview, this is like 10 days later, the cops from the same department this guy works at came and arrested those workers, took them to jail with a huge bond. This is from St. Louis County, Missouri. This happened on Thursday, September 26, where... Road crews were repaving sections of Lindbergh Road. There was this left turn lane that was completely coned off. And then there was this temporary sign that was in the middle of the road saying no left turn due to paving work that was occurring. One of the road workers said that this angry driver assaulted him in that blocked lane. Another construction worker, 23-year-old Garrett Gibbs, was interviewed about it. He noticed that this guy got out of his vehicle. He was a big guy. And he said that he wanted to turn. Even though it was temporarily closed, he kept saying that he was a police officer so he could make that turn. Yet he was not driving a police car. They took a picture of the car and the temporary tag on the car was even expired. So that picture shows the off-duty officer's private personal car inside their work zone where he was not supposed to be. You can see the no left turn sign just to the right of the car. Gibbs said that once police officers arrived that they cuffed the off-duty officer and allowed the construction workers to go back to work. So this happened at like 10.30 p.m., and they kept the cuffed off-duty officer, who they thought was drunk, they kept him there until 3 a.m. Then they let him drive away without giving him any field sobriety test, without doing a breathalyzer. Did they keep him there so long just to give him time to sober up? In his interview, Gibbs said, I don't believe he was breathalyzed. I don't know if the car was searched or anything. So the police officers were informed that We believed he was drunk. So it was 10 days after that incident, police then arrested two of the workers, Matt Devlin and Donnie Hurley, and they're now charged with assault, kidnapping, and armed criminal action. Again, the record is sealed for some reason, despite the fact that the two road workers are now in the St. Louis County Justice Center facing decades in prison. One of the workers, Mr. Devlin, is being held on a quarter of a million dollar cash only bond. And Mr. Hurley is being held on a $100,000 cash only bond. They have bond reduction hearings scheduled for October 15th. So let's recap this. The workers were on the job. They were where they were supposed to be. An off-duty police officer who had no reason, no legal right to pass their cones and demand that they allow him through the construction zone, he came into the situation and caused a problem. As far as I know, there's no video of what happened, so it's a he said, she said, but again, the workers were were where they were supposed to be. The off-duty police officer was not supposed to be there. Whatever happened, there was an altercation. Cops from the same department that the off-duty officer works for arrived and handcuffed their own colleague. The construction workers told the cops that were on duty that they thought he was drunk. So the cops kept the off-duty officer there for over three hours, then let him go without field sobriety tests, without breathalyzer. Also during that three-hour period, didn't bother to even interview any of the construction workers. If it's a he said, she said, you would think that they would want to do that. Don't arrest any of the construction workers. Don't charge them with anything. Don't put them in handcuffs. 
But then 10 days later, when the construction workers talk to the news media and they're about to have an interview in just hours, the same police department shows up and arrests those guys, preventing them from being interviewed and charges them with felonies that will that could potentially keep them in prison for years. And as far as we know, no charges against the likely drunk off-duty police officer who came into the construction zone with no right to do so and started an altercation. We know how this works by now, don't we? Government will do whatever it's best to protect itself, to protect themselves, so long as this is happening behind the scenes and there's no sunlight shining on what they're attempting to do. But when the public finds out and gets outraged, that is when they're stopped from doing things like this. So I will link absolutely everything I could find on this in the first pinned comment below. I will link all of the contact information for the prosecutor's office involved in this, for the law enforcement agency involved in this, so that you, the public, can demand answers to all of these questions that we have, such as who was the off-duty police officer? Why was he handcuffed? Why was he detained at the work zone for three hours and then allowed to leave? Is there body cam footage? Is there dash cam footage of this? Why is his name being kept secret? Why are the records sealed? Was there an internal investigation conducted? Is there one now? Why were the construction workers not interviewed if you thought that they did something wrong, especially felony level crime wrong. Why were they only charged without notice 10 days later, just hours before they were set to be interviewed by the news media? Whose decision was it to charge them? What is the name of the prosecutor who is ethically responsible for these charges being leveled against these construction workers? Does he stand behind what's taking place here? The arrest of these workers raises significant questions. Was this retaliation an attempt to silence the workers? The timing and the nature of these arrests say a lot. This isn't just about what happened that day. This is a spotlight on how authorities handle internal accountability. These people had a right to work safely. They had a right to do their job. They had a right to defend themselves against some drunk guy who came in in a road rage incident. They had a First Amendment right to speak to the news media. And then we have the fact that the off-duty officer's name, his identity, is being withheld. And what's that the cops always tell us about, we have to provide our ID. We have to disclose our identity to them, our date of birth to them. Everything must be documented. Yet it doesn't work the other way around, does it? Even when a police officer is off-duty. They think they're getting away with something here, but they, they are not going to get away with it. There are questions that must be answered. What do you think? Is this an abuse of power or is there more to the story that we're not seeing? Drop your thoughts below in a comment. Remember, this isn't just noise. This is about seeking justice and understanding our rights. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. They have not been sending them out lately for some reason. So until next time, our rights don't end where your fear begins. Freedom is scary. Deal with it.